Hey guys, what's going on? So once again, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you guys you know, checking this stuff out. Um, as you saw from the video title, this is today's gonna be about power. So I have a little quick disclaimer before I get started. Everything that I say or do here, this is uh, simply just for me. Uh, do not try this at home, okay? Uh, this is just for ideas and stuff like that. So just as a disclaimer, don't actually anybody try this kind of stuff because there's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of danger involved. This is electricity. So please be careful. All right, so today, the uh, idea that I had, at least for a video, was power. So I had mentioned before that we were gonna do a gig uh, coming up soon that was a boxing match and stuff like that. I started to record the vlog for that and then it was like 95 degrees outside when we got there. Uh, people weren't where they were supposed to be when we got there, so we kinda had to move kinda quick and uh, help other people out that we really shouldn't have been needing to help out. But it was what it was, so I didn't get a chance to film a lot of it. Uh, I do have some video, and I'll throw some of the clips up from that uh, here right now just to show you a little bit of it. But yeah, we did the, the boxing match. We powered everything ourselves, which is what this video is mostly about. Um, when doing outdoor events like that, see, I, I'm just a small mobile DJ. I don't have, I'm not this big company that's got all kinds of stuff that, you know, I have big power distros and stuff like that. I don't have any of that stuff. The things that I have, since I'm a smaller business, are things that I have either built myself or, you know, I've bought a lot of stuff, don't get me wrong. But in this instance here, I don't have like big stuff to handle, you know, big power distros and things like that. So what do I have to be able to do these outdoor events? So I have a, a mixture of things. Uh, the company that I work with, we have a couple different generators, things like that. We have one inverter generator, 3,500 watt. Um, it's ultra quiet. Check out inverter generators if you don't know what those are. Um, Harbor Freight sells them. A lot of Honda makes them. A lot of different places make them. The inverter generators are very quiet. They're good for smaller stuff, but they're usually typically limited in power. Like 3,500 watts is about all you can get out of one of the inverter generators. You can get bigger ones, but they become very expensive once you get past like, you know, three or 4,000 watts. So, Oh, they're also limited to just 120 volts. They typically don't have like a 240 volt output and stuff like that. So what did I do? Well, I needed a lot of power for this event. I had a lot of stuff going on. We were gonna be running four dual 18s, uh, at least four ZLX 12Ps, powered speakers. Um, all the front of house stuff. We were also running a truss arch with some lighting on it. So there's a lot of stuff that needed to be ran with this. The venue did not have power. They have like one outlet outside of the building that's there and the caterer companies that are there for the food typically take that for their hot plates and stuff like that. So I was like, well, all of our power has to be you know, self-sourced. And mind you, we did charge a little bit extra for doing this kind of stuff, but let me show you what we have um, for a big amount of power. And then uh, I'll show you how I handled you know, building a distro and handling the big long run I was gonna have to have because these generators are loud. So let's take a look at what's on this uh, table here in, in front of me. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at this. So the first thing I have here, move my tripod out of the way, is the Predator, sorry, Predator 8750. This is a gasoline generator. Nothing super fancy. It's a 7,000 running watt, 8750 peak wattage. Um, it does have electric start. I don't have a battery on it right now. I have one coming, but irrelevant. Um, it has on the front here two standard 120 volt outlets here. These are GFIs, but it's only GFI if you ground the case to the earth, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, these are breakered at 20 amps a piece. So these are two 20 amp circuits. And then over here, I have a 30 amp uh, 120 socket here, the three pole. It's breakered, sorry, 28 amps. And then I have the L1430 240 volt socket, which is breakered at 30 amps on each leg. Uh, it also has a DC 12 volt output, breakered at eight and a half amps. And then here are the uh, 28 amp breakers for these. Um, the generator itself, I mean, it's pretty big. Um, it is pretty heavy, so it's a 230 net weight thing. I mean, it's heavy. You gotta have the wheels with it, and it's got the carry handle over here. Um, it just takes regular gasoline. You can use normal 10% stuff. I've been using non-ethanol in this, but that's just a, a good generator practice in general. But yeah, this is the generator. Nothing too fancy. I mean, it's your standard home gamer generator. I mean, nothing too exciting. It's a generator. Um, 
And then what we do with this generator is since this thing, this thing is loud. I mean, it is really loud. If you've ever been around any kind of like standard home generators and stuff like that, they're loud. So when I'm doing events, like I'm used to doing sound. So I need things to be kind of quiet where I'm at. So the problem here comes, I've got two 20 amp outlets on the thing and then I've got the 240 volt outlet. Um, so what, you know, I could run two like really long extension cords off those 120 volt outlets. That's always an option. Um, or I have a 240 volt outlet. One of the things that I can do is what if I ran a you know, 240 volt circuit on some heavy gauge cable and then run it to a distro box and then split that 240 volts out to two 20 amp circuits. Now there's some theory we're gonna get into here in a second, but basically that was one of the best ideas that I had to get power far enough away from this thing without having to worry about like voltage drop and having to run like four or five extension cords. I run one cord and that gives me 240 volts, you know, 150 feet away that is breakered at 30 amps on the generator, but 20 amps per leg at the distro. So I built a distro. Let's take a look at this thing. So this is the power cable itself. This is an L1430. That's the 240 volt uh, plug for that one. This cable is big stuff. Um, this is four conductor, obviously, since I have four conductors on this. I have my ground right here. I have both hots, so both legs of the hot, and then I have the neutral here. 150 feet of this stuff, it weighs a metric, it weighs a ton. And then here is the distro box that I built. So I built this all myself. Technically this isn't high voltage because it has to be above a thousand volts to be technically high voltage, but I just want to keep people out of it right now. Um, my cabling comes to the bottom here. I have a lock on it, so you can't open it. On either side, I have two outlets, two duplex outlets. See these are black, and then these over here are white. And what these are, as I'll open this up in a second, each of these is one leg of this 240 volts coming in. So this is 120 volts here, and this is 120 volts here, but these are two separate circuits coming off each leg on this four conductor. And then on the front of the box here, I do have a voltmeter and a f uh, frequency counter as well. So I can tell whether or not my generator is running at 60 hertz and it's got 240 volts coming in. This is actually paralleled off the input of this, so that if this thing's lit up, then I know there is power inside this. Uh, it just helps me to be a little more careful coming to it. But yeah, 150 feet long, 240 volts coming through off this big generator here. And this gives me my, my power distro. All right, let me open this up. All right, so open it up, we'll check out inside. This folds back here. All right, it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but I'll walk you through it here. It's not plugged in anything, so we are safe here. So coming in, we have our heavy, this eight gauge coming in. We have a neutral bar right here, neutral bus bar right here. We have a ground bus bar here. Um, I tried to keep it all separate as best I could. And then the way this works is both phases, which are the red and the black coming up off of this, work their way up into here, which you see right here, red and black. This is the uh, voltmeter, which is running up here to that 240 volt meter up front. Parallel it off the input. This is the input of these two breakers. So these breakers are 20 amp breakers. These are DIN rail breakers. I wanted to use a DIN rail just because it was just going to be easier to mount everything up inside this box um, and keep it secure for moving around. So what happens is we run it here into the breakers. These are 20 amp breakers. I don't know if it'll focus there. There we go. I can turn them on and off individually. Output of the breakers. We have the out, uh, one little piece of the output here coming over to this voltmeter. Now this is just a voltmeter and a current meter. So there's a current choke on that leg right there so that I can actually measure how much current is being pulled across this leg and then I have another one on this leg here, the black leg. And it's over here. But so that way I can tell what the voltage is on both legs. These should show 120 volts and I'll show you here in a bit, I'll hook it up. These both show 120 volts and then it will show me my current that's being pulled on each leg. And then of course on the output here I have the solid copper Remax here. It's from Remax at least. Coming over into this side, it feeds this side, and then this outlet chains up to this outlet here. And then neutrals, both neutrals go to the ground bar, or sorry, neutral bus, and then both grounds go over here to the ground bus. 
course I have my white and my green there appropriately. Same thing on the other side. Just one piece of this coming out to the voltmeter just so I can measure the voltage. The blue wires here are both running over to the neutral bus. That way I have I can measure the 120 volts off this leg and then 120 volts off this leg. Now when this stuff is running, of course the all these lugs in here are going to be hot. Um, so you don't definitely don't want to touch anything while this thing has power pushed into it. Um, yeah, same thing over here. Just the black runs over here. Neutrals go over here, the neutral bus. And that's really it. I mean, this isn't that complex of a piece of equipment. In reality, I don't need these voltmeters and current meters. I don't really need this, the voltmeter up front. That was just kind of for my informational knowledge, you know. I wanted to see what the voltage was on each leg. And I wanted to see what the current was on each leg as well. So these are breakered at 20 amps here. They're breaking at 28 amps a leg on this guy here. So, I'm actually, I have myself a little bit of a safety factor here. I don't ever plan on running a full 20 amps across this, because one thing you have to think about, this is 8 gauge coming in. One of the little calculations you kind of have to think about is, I, have tw I can have 20 amps on this leg and 20 amps on this leg. That sounds fine and dandy because this, you know, this wire, yeah, it can handle 20 amps, no problem. You can handle more than that. Well, the problem comes is when you have, you're splitting up 240 like this, this neutral is going to have to carry the, lo the current load of both phases. So in theory, the way this is breakered right now, I could have up to 40 amps on this neutral bus here, on this neutral coming through, which is the reason it's 8 gauge and not 10. Because if it was 10, then I mean you would have, you would be exceeding the, the current capability of uh, 10 gauge stranded copper wire. So that's why it is like that. Uh, I try obviously not to run, you know, I'm usually running audio stuff on this, so I don't have typical constant heavy loads uh, on one of these two phases. And even still, I, uh, you know, it's always probably a good idea to try to keep my current to a minimum by all means. I'm not going to plug in just a whole bunch of crap that I don't need or, you know, not distribute stuff appropriately. Because I want to obviously keep my current load a minimum on that, that neutral bus. I don't want to sit there and, you know, melt a wire at some point in time. So anyway, that's the distro. Um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you about it. It works great. Um, we'll plug it in here in a second. We'll take a look at it. But like I said, I don't recommend you guys doing this. This is not something that you should do on your own, especially if you're not an electrician or you don't have electrical experience and things like that, because this stuff can be dangerous. You can hurt yourself. Um, if you make a mistake and, and flip two wires or something like that, then you can have you know 120 volts across the ground pin on something. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do that can get yourself hurt. So please don't try this yourself. Um, if you do want something like this and you want to build it yourself, consult an electrician. They can give you the you know the, the information you need to be safe. Number one and two, to not damage your equipment. You don't want to damage your stuff. I mean, this generator isn't isn't the cheapest thing out there, so I don't want to damage this thing. Um, by being dumb with a uh, with an, uh, you're trying to power an event or something like that. So anyway, so at this point, let me uh, let's fire this thing up. I'll let you see what the meters look like and stuff like that in here, um, and see what's going on. And this generator's loud. Uh, obviously, I'll crank the volume down in post, but still, this thing is pretty loud.
Uh, so one more thing just to cover, then I have this. This, you know, this 240 distro is not limited to being used with this generator. So anything that has a 220 30 amp plug on it, so say I, I roll up to a, uh, a house or something and they've got an L1430 on the outside of the house to hook up their camper with or something like that. That'll plug right into that just fine and I'll have exactly the same thing I have running with the generator. I have you know, one large cable that all of my equipment can be powered off of. All the grounds are bonded, you know, so everything's, you know, ground loops uh, won't be a problem. You know, I can have all of that on a, a plug on a house. So in theory, another thing I can do, I don't recommend this, is if I roll up to a house or a, a somewhere that has a dryer socket on it. Typically your dryer outlets are breakered at 30 amps. They're a different plug usually, they have a special dryer plug and stuff. But I can easily make an adapter to go from this L1430 to a dryer plug. And I can plug into that dryer plug and have power to my distro. And once again, it's power that I know of. You know, I don't know, I know that typically if it's a dryer, there's not gonna be anything else in that circuit. So I know it's, it's clean and clear. I don't have like, you know, a bunch of shop lights on a 120 volt outlet somewhere that I'm trying to plug in and run, you know, three or two 6,000 watt amps on it. You know, um, I know that, you know, there's not gonna be anything else on it. Um, the same works for you know a lot of venues or a lot of uh, yeah a lot of venues even still if they have like you know uh, accommodations for like hot plates and uh, uh, big rollout refrigerators or, or stuff like that a lot of times you will see the 1430 plugs in a wall somewhere so I can plug right into one of those I know it's going to be a dedicated circuit and I know I can have clean power right to my distro and I can control it even on top of that if I come to a venue that has lugs off of a either 100 amp breaker or a 30 amp breaker or something like that. I can, don't do this, I can uh, make an adapter from this that goes to uh, you know, bare wires and I can clamp onto the lugs and I have clean 240 volt power. I'm breakered at the box so I can protect my equipment. Um, I may not be able to necessarily protect my wiring if I don't breaker things at the source, but in theory it can be done. So that can easily be done with an L1430 socket and I can just run a, you know, 10 gauge or 8 gauge, whatever, out of this, up to tinned aluminum even, whatever I want, up to somewhere that I can bond to lugs. I could even wire directly into a breaker panel if I have this thing, and uh, it has uh, you wire running out of it, like 8 gauge or 10 gauge, whatever. I can wire that directly into a panel, and that gives me my L1430 that I need. If there's a 240 amp open 30 amp breaker on the breaker box, I'm good to go. If I have to unhook something, I can unhook something, you know. I don't recommend unhooking anything unless you know what you're doing. But that's something you can do with this. So it gives you some flexibility. So anyway, that's it for the video. Uh, I'm going to leave it right there. Be safe with your power. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt your equipment. Um, if you like this video and you made it this far, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. I like the support. Uh, it helps me out. So have fun with your gigs. Be safe. And we'll see you in the next video.